The Veda means uh, knowledge, and it's knowledge of what? It's knowledge of nature and the universe. Um, the Veda is not a religion. It's, uh, it doesn't have dogma. It's universal and all-inclusive. Um, for me, that's what was so appealing about it. I was like, oh, there's something that includes everyone. You know, it's not them versus them. It's we're all one. You know, it comes from this perspective that everything is a, a part of all one thing and that there's this beautiful multi multiplicity of this universe that we experience, all encompassed within this one thing. And what is this one thing? This one thing is, um, it's something you can actually experience through meditation. You can have a direct experience of it. Um, and you essentially settle the mind where you're going beyond thought, and you slip into that gap between thoughts, and you experience this unbounded state beyond thought completely. And you're settled into this state of being, pure consciousness. And it feels really good. <laughs> and there's, from a um, perspective, uh, a scientific perspective, quantum mechanics has a very similar theory about this oneness of the universe. And they call this, this place of oneness the unified field. So the state of being and the unified field are essentially the one and the same thing. And um, quantum theory actually supports this, this reality. Um, and the way we can describe this is by zooming into the micro. So let's say you, know, you take a skin cell on your hand and you put that skin cell under a microscope and you zoom into that skin cell and you see all of the working parts, um, the membrane and all the little, little parts inside. You zoom in further and you, you finally are able to see the DNA and the RNA and you zoom in further and you can now see the molecules and you break up those molecules and you start to distinguish the different atoms that make up those molecules and then within those atoms you have subatomic particles remember this from chemistry class right you've got protons neutrons and electrons and the vast majority of that that space that makes up an atom is actually empty space the protons and neutrons and electrons are simply bound to each other based on these nuclear forces and so you zoom even further into those subatomic particles and you see quarks and leptoquarks and eventually you get to this vast field of energy that's simply pulsating and rather than any substance or matter really being there there's simply a pulsation of energy like a wave that appears and disappears and then the wave appears again and disappears and this pulsation of energy um, repeats itself over and over and over again and we see various sequences of these pulsations of energy oriented in different patterns and those are the building blocks of these subatomic particles, which then create the atoms and the molecules, which then create the DNA and RNA, which then eventually structure themselves into these cells, which then make up our body and so on. Um, and then we can actually even go out the other way, you know, you can bring a bunch of people, humans together, and suddenly you have a city and a civilization, and then you have the world and you can go far out into the universe, right? So it works in both directions, but really the point is that we're all made up of the same one thing. When you zoom in far deep enough into what makes up the physical universe, what we realize is it's all pulsation of energy. All we are is pulsation of energy. And it's just the different sequence and orientation of these pulsations of energy that distinguish the difference between you and me and the hardwood floor and the brick wall and the plant. Um, and it gives us this beautiful experience of, of life and of living. But underneath all of it, we're all connected and unified as one thing. And so quantum mechanics supports this theory. Um, and there's a lot of scientific research that has proven a lot of these aspects of this theory. So it's, it's um, regarded to be very true in, in many ways. And um, it's fully supported by the Vedic worldview. And the Vedic worldview has been around for um, over 10,000 years. It's not made up by anyone. It's not owned by anyone. Vedic knowledge is universal and it comes from nature. It's, it's cognized through direct experience. So it's, it's like science in that way. You know, you're, you're looking and observing at the world and um, drawing different ideas and conclusions based on what you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. 
and um, practicing meditation will just start to awaken up this whole other reality for you. Mm -hmm.